Hello Gearspace, my name is Frederick, I'm with Bitwig, we are at Superbooth 2021. We're in this lovely tent listening to the rain outside and I'd like to show you Bitwig Studio 4. Essentially Bitwig Studio is a DAW that you can, you know, produce, record, arrange, master, all the usual things. With Bitwig Studio 4 we released well, two main features, I would say, comping and operators. And um, I'll start by showing you our operators today. And I'm just gonna start a loop so that we can have a listen to how it sounds. So this is a, uh, a simple little loop, playing this kind of moody music in the background. The operators is essentially a way to bring movement and life into note and audio sequences. And as you can see here, the red kind of note pattern happening here is, is a, it's a very short um, sequence, but it's evolving over time. So this is the, the ideal use case for operators. If we go in to look at some some more details. We we'll, can select a couple of notes here and you can see on the left hand side in our inspector panel we have the different operator settings. Let's select one of these notes. You can see that it's gotten uh, the first operator is chance so we've given it a chance of 13% meaning that it will only play well, quite rarely actually. If we open up the note expression panel, we can also see this as kind of visually represented in the expression panel. So the note clip is changing all the time because they have different chances of happening. Let's jump into a different scene here. And this is a note clip and each of the event has also a chance setting meaning that each individual event will only play ever so often and let's jump into the next one so it's a it's a powerful tool to bring kind of musicality and variation and to make your clips or loops more lively, essentially. So let's have a more closer look at how they work, actually. For that, I am going to go into a more or less empty project. I'm using our Base 08 808 drum machine for this example, just to kind of very quickly come up with a small sequence. Let's jump into edit mode so we can see it in full screen. And let me just paint out a bunch of a bunch of notes, just so we have something to work with. So this is a four bar loop. As you can see, it's quite short. And it will just continue playing the way it is right now because there are no operators. Let's bring in some hi-hats. So the hi-hats will always play, of course. Uh, but let's select those and lower the chance of them happening. So we will get some, some variation. And out of this four bar loop, we've made something that's gonna change forever. You'll see actually a visual representation um, because the chances are recalculated as it were, every loop kind of um, cycle. And you'll see how the outline of the notes are painted, if they are playing or not grayed out if they're not playing this time around. Another type of operator is a recurrence. And let's say I want to have the crash symbol only play every four bars, instead of having to make or every eight bars or 16 bars or whatever, instead of having to make a longer clip, I can just give it an occurrence. So let's go down here to the left and drag up a number. And here I have this tiny little interface, essentially telling Bitwig Studio when to play this note. So now 
nothing happens until the fourth time, then it plays. I can make this a larger number, so every you know, eight cycle, I want this clap to play two times. So with just a few very simple tricks, we've actually made this sequence a little bit more, you know, sophisticated or a little bit more moving um, instead of just having the same loop play again and again and again. Okay, so I think the claps are a little bit too nuts. I'm gonna uh, lower them a bit. So let's bring in some toms. So again, this is just repeating the way it is over and over again. But let's say um, I only want to play the toms when I have a fill, for instance. Then we have what, call, what we call conditions. So these are kind of logic operators. So let's say I'm going to give this property fill on to the notes. And fill is a global parameter. It's kind of like a transport parameter. Right now we're not in fill mode, but let's activate fill. And then our toms are, are played and turn it on and off again. And this of course works the other way around as well. So let's bring in the rim shot. And let's say this, excuse me, this should only play when Phil is off. Yeah, so that's kind of like uh, the the simple operators uh, that has to do with logic. Let's look quickly at our note repeats operators. So what I've done is I've created a very long note for this clav. I've selected it and I'm gonna divide it into sections. Oh, excuse me. So now I've divided this note into six sections essentially and you can see they have this kind of tiny little line there to show me how many divisions there are if we increase that number if you were so inclined you can use this to create like kind of weird experimental rhythms or just give some additional flavor to your uh, to your rhythm building let's expand on that and I'm gonna create a second note and give that a different segmentation let's give that a six and listen to the clav so that's a very simple way of building interesting rhythms okay so I just want to quickly show how to record into comping mode inside the clip launcher so we have in our play menu, we have the option to say, okay, I want to do record as takes. And let's set the take length here, meaning that when I hit record, it's going to record this short kind of time region and then create a new lane and record into that. So I'm setting it quite low just for demonstration purposes. And let's do a take and hope for the best. I'm going to put down the microphone quickly. Alright, so what happened here is that it recorded a, a smaller region and broke it down into lanes for me. So let me just make this bigger. 
So I'm now in comping mode and I see the different take lanes and I can just tap them. And this works as you would expect for a comping tools. I can very quickly just select a couple of regions that I, that I like. I can move things around if I feel the timing is off. If I just grab this lower part of this um, section, I can move it in, in the time region. If I grab the higher part of the region, I can lower and you know increase the volume. So this is how we've implemented this. And um, to be a little bit technical, it's on a clip level, meaning that it's contained inside this clip. So that means if I'd kind of drag it into, let's say the arranger, for instance, I still have, you know, all the different possibilities that I need to do edits and do changes. If I'm in the timeline, if I'm in the clip launcher, regardless of where I am. Cool. Yeah, so that's a very quick rundown of the two main features of Visual Studio 4 available now. Um, you can learn a lot more about it on bitwig.com, watch our videos and yeah, check it out for yourselves. Thank you. Yeah.